two. Russ trying to get it to Avery Bradley, and out of bounds it goes. It's a tough one for Avery Look to, out. to handle. He was cut. Well, there's nothing wrong with any player if someone's not playing well enough and they don't get to finish the game or they don't get to close the game out. There's nothing wrong with giving somebody else that you have a, a you know, feel is going to give you a better chance, uh, giving them that opportunity. And, you know, hopefully uh, the response is that that player plays better. I'm not sure what his issue was with me or I'm not sure why but I can't really give you an answer why things we never really connected maybe that's something that he has to answer but I never from the get-go was feeling like I was having to like try to prove myself to him and my capabilities and what I've been able to do for this game and it's unfortunate but it's really not I kind of out of my hands. I can't recall a scenario in the entire 76-year history of the NBA quite like what has happened and is happening to the Los Angeles Lakers at this very moment. With training camp fast approaching and Russell Westbrook still being a member of the Lakers, and I, nor does anyone, have any idea of what is going to happen. Russell Westbrook chose to have the worst season of his 14-year NBA career the same year he's due over $47 million. And now, seemingly, no one wants him. And the team that does have him, the belief is that they are stuck with Russ. Stuck with Russ. I never thought I would hear a team say quote unquote stuck with one of the greatest players in NBA history and arguably the most explosive point guard the game has ever seen. I never thought one of the greatest players to ever step foot in the NBA, an icon, a triple-double machine, would start getting passed around in the league just a couple of years after winning the MVP. And I certainly never, ever thought I would see the day where people are now saying that Patrick Beverly is a better player than Russell Westbrook. Boy, I am not about to start dissecting that hot take, but man, this is really what it has to come to for Russell Westbrook. And while it might be a bit premature to already label this downfall of Russ's career and how he went from all NBA player to a fringe starter in just a couple of seasons, I can't help but acknowledge what a brutal spot Russ and the Lakers are in right now. I have heard a lot of things about what the Lakers plan on doing with Russ. A whole lot of things. I've heard speculation about Russ getting traded for Kyrie, Russ for Mike Conley, Russ for Kyle Lowry. I've even heard rumors that Russ himself would demand a trade to force his way out of what has been a humiliating last year for him. But just the other day, I heard something that I just, I just couldn't compute in my mind. I really began thinking to myself, is this really happening? Has it seriously come to this? I am hearing from people in the media and fans that the Lakers should just pay Russ his money and keep him away from the team. That the Lakers should just send Russ home. And if you don't really get what I'm talking about, think of John Wall's situation in Houston. The Rockets kept Wall away from the team and as the last guy on the bench and quietly cut him his 40 plus million dollar contract while Wall sat. And as selfless and deferential as this was from Wall to accept being deactivated after being a multiple-time All-Star in the NBA, it is a move that about zero ex-stars would have accepted. Now I know what you're thinking. You are literally getting paid millions to sit on the bench and not say a word. What's so selfless about that? Guys, as a professional basketball player, a vast majority of players in the NBA actually love the game. They work tirelessly to become stars in the NBA. And if you're like Wall and were an all-NBA caliber player for so many years, it is hard to swallow all of your pride and accept becoming a nobody, even if it means you're getting all that money that you could ever ask for. And now he's an LA Clipper and has a chance to revitalize his career, so I'm happy for him nonetheless. But back to Russ. Unlike what happened to John Wall, if the Lakers chose to isolate Russ from the team and deactivate him until his contract is up, it'll almost certainly derail his career. Like I am 99% sure of it. Wall still played star level ball for the Rockets before injuries forced the Rockets to keep him away so that the young talent could develop. And again, to Wall's undying credit, he fully accepted the role as a mentor for some of the younger players. Russ, on the other hand, is coming off an embarrassing season where he was exposed on the National Lakers spotlight as a turnover machine and someone who flat out struggles miserably to shoot the ball from anywhere on the court. If he were to go out like this, which team would have the reason to give Russ a shot after the 2022 season? How many people would say that Russ's career is over and that he is never going to be the same player he once was? 
and what are the odds that he'll find his way on a roster that'll be considered a legitimate title contender? There is so much that would transpire and in turn pretty much ruin Russ. Now, would the Lakers actually consider pulling this off? I'll say it. If the Lakers sent Russ home tomorrow, they'd immediately be a better team. And that is not to bash Russ. The fact of the matter is that he absolutely, unequivocally, does not fit next to LeBron and AD, and shoots far too poorly from the floor, which hurts the Lakers on so many levels. But no, I do not see the Lakers going this far, at least not yet. The Lakers are a widely recognized entity, basketball royalty, an iconic franchise. Sending Russ home would put a stain on the Lakers' aura. It's not something LA's genie bus would ever want. It would create so much drama, buzz, and be a downright distraction to a team that is trying to compete for a title next season. But with all of that being said, if Russ somehow manages to play even worse next season than he did last season, I'll be completely honest with you, they might just do it. And my God, would it create some wild storylines. And speaking of next season, I don't think Russ will play as poorly. In fact, I think you'll have a much better season. And maybe I'm speaking more from my heart and as a fan of Russ who's closely followed his career for so many years now. I could be entirely wrong about this, but I do think he'll improve. As bad as Russ was last season, and there's no defending his play, although last year I think we are forgetting just one thing, it was just one season. Here's the key number, 21. Any guesses to what that number means? 21, the number of games LeBron, Russ, and AD played together during that lone season together. So ask yourself this, if any other star trio underperformed during a season after playing just 21 games together, would you be saying that they need to break up the trio and start over? Or would you say that they need more time? And in those 21 games, there was always something going on. Whether it was LeBron returning from suspension or COVID protocols, whether it was AD not being 100% and not being there for enough games consecutively to build a rapport between the three, whatever it was, there was always something going on with the Lakers that disallowed that bond between Russ, LeBron, and AD to form. And while it's silly to think that Russ will somehow come back next season as a good shooter and excel in all the advanced analytics, He's still a star and knows a thing or two about playing on a winning franchise and a championship contender. Maybe. Maybe we just have to give it another season. Or not even that. Maybe we should just hope LeBron, AD, and Russ are all available enough to play at least 15 to 20 games uninterrupted and at full strength. Maybe then we can sit back and assess this team and see if anything needs to be changed. But as far as the Lakers quote unquote John Walling next season, I mean, no way. I just cannot believe that that would happen. And neither should it, for at least the time being. I don't know how to feel right now about these Lakers. Will they manage to trade Russ and bring in someone that'll actually star on the team? I don't know. At this point in time, it really does feel like it's Russ or bust for the purple and gold. And with the NBA season fast approaching, it remains to be seen what LeBron and company can pull off next season.